This project was really a way for me to step outside of the university as a place solely of learning and extend it into an application where we can have direct impact on, on places that need it. We're embarking on one of either two or three legs down to Guatemala City in Guatemala. I'm part of a student group under MHEAL at the University of Michigan, and last November we came together to try to develop an electronic stethoscope for rural clinics in Guatemala. The purpose of our trip right now is, is to observe and interview people in the healthcare industry in Guatemala, the urban areas and rural areas, to learn how is medicine done, how is healthcare done in Guatemala, and see if the assumptions we have about how that's done are correct. So the problem is that about uh, 1,500 Guatemalan babies are born each year with cardiac defects, and since about two-thirds of them are in rural areas not easily accessible to the healthcare of the major cities, uh, they don't often get screened, and this can lead to major complications. So what we're trying to do is provide an electronic stethoscope such that they can record the sounds of the newborn baby's hearts, uh, send those into the physicians in the city centers via the cellular network, and there the physicians can actually screen or diagnose to see if the babies have problems. Eat breakfast in Antigua, Guatemala. On the roof, black-headed. One of the booking. Check. <laughs> And and it feels amazing out here. <laughs> After a late night arrival and a good night of sleep, the MHEAL team starts with a brief tour of Antigua and a Guatemalan history lesson. Now, the Captain General's house with a two story building. The After a day of getting acclimated, the real work begins. Going to Guatemala City! Yeah. <laughs> woo, woo. Today, we're, uh, we're going to get a tour of Roosevelt Hospital. Uh, we're going to meet Dr. Castaneda, who's the, the head of this foundation and really the, the visionary for all this work, and uh, meet his team, get a tour of the hospital. We're, we're a little nervous because we've been waiting so long to, to meet them and talk with them. Dr. Castaneda is the reason the U of M students are in Guatemala. Aldo Castaneda, internationally known pediatric heart surgeon, asked John Barry, director of the Appropriate Technology Collaborative in Ann Arbor, if he could help him develop an enhanced stethoscope. Barry, in turn, asked Michigan engineering students for assistance. Buenos días. Buenos días. ¿Dónde? Doctor Castañeda. Castañeda. Sí. Adelante. This extreme discrepancy between the haves and have not is a criminal, really. Dr. Castañeda started the meeting with a rundown of the social and economic situation in Guatemala. There are always rich and poor people in any place, but here the differences are extreme. And so there's a three, two, three percent of the population who has a lot. So in 30 percent earn less than a dollar a day. Medicine reflects the socioeconomic conditions of the country. Students wasted no time peppering Guatemalan doctors with questions. They were hungry for information that would help them design a system that would work in a Guatemalan reality. Uh, in the rural clinics, who do you see as being the users that will actually use the instrumentation and then send those files. Instead of this abstract idea of we're making a device to help some people in Guatemala, now we're meeting who are the doctors, who are the patients, who are the people here, and the foundations that we can work with and the organizations that can help facilitate this project from conception right now to actually full implementation. And we have some patients here. And uh, hola. You can come in. Yeah. Sí, 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 sí. Hola. Todavía no está operado, ¿verdad? Está esperando, ¿verdad? This baby is a blue baby. It was born with one of the uh, cyanotic uh, problems. And um, he's been here for over a month because he was really malnourished. And we are trying to recuperate him just before going for surgery. Weekly dream list. This is, the, this is the list of uh, potential patients for this week. We couldn't do this project without what happened today. And just one of the things that became very clear, like when Dr. Gaitan put on the headphones and so, played back just uh, an example recording. recording and say, yes, this infant has a uh, congenital heart yeah. defect. And so it's like, this is a go. It, you know, it's I think it was really just an honor to meet these guys. Aldea Paya. After the visit to the hospital in the capital, students headed to a remote rural settlement high in the mountains. 
y hay mucho nacimiento. So the name of the place we're going is Pa. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. And it means place of water. It's even smaller than a village. It's a community around the water source and around the common work that they do and there's 70 families there. The reason that we came to Guatemala is we really needed to be immersed in the culture and get to know our users and really see what they want out of the design. So we're trying to shed all of our preconceptions of what we think they might want um, by coming here and, and observing them and talking to them and learning from them. The team came to visit a group of midwives and community leaders from the second largest ethnic group in Guatemala, the Cacciadores. But before questions could flow, a traditional lunch was in order. It was very eye-opening for me. It was the first time that I had been out to a rural area in a developing country and it was just, it was great to really see the people in their natural, um, you know, everyday lives coming to feed us and talk to us. And it was exciting and it was interesting to see who we'll be working with. So they are ta working with the mothers, uh, getting them to bring their children to be weighed and measured. They're the ones that do the weighing and measuring, they're distributing the, the food if they need it. Have they ever like used a stethoscope before? No. Or, like, no. Okay. Engineering students learn that the Coxchicel midwives don't even use a regular stethoscope to determine the condition of newborns. Instead, they use their hands and their ears. Another potential barrier the students identified for their future device was language. Some midwives and many other Coxchicel don't speak Spanish. We learned a lot of good information to apply to our project, but we also learned you know, how much all these different players uh, really care about these patients and kind of the potential for this device and the system. And a lot of the solution is also outside the technology. I mean, it's not like technology can solve all these problems that are here. It's, you know, it plays a role in facilitating it, but it's this bigger picture of this ecosystem, the healthcare system, and understanding the culture. <laughs> the next day brought a visit to a very different clinic. A clinic in Nueva Santa Catarina, a fairly developed village in the capital of a province. This is the staff of the clinic here. <laughs> so they go out into the communities and they are looking for um, you know, health problems and the biggest one is malnutrition and so they're, they're doing the way, they go to the houses themselves and weigh and measure the babies and then bring the babies here that need attention. The clinic is located a breathtaking 10,000 feet above sea level, hence the nickname Alaska. So there's 46,000 inhabitants of this municipality and this is the health care place for all of them. Can you ask um, what kind of, or what are the most uh, common conditions that are seen for both children and the for adults too? Uh -huh. and respiratory infections. Uh, and infection, skin infections. Can you ask about when a child is born and mm -hmm. how often they see okay. them? Most babies are born at home. 85% of babies are born at home. Lo que hay que hacer es enviarla al hospital para que le hagan lo necesario. She needs to be taken to the hospital immediately for a C-section. So a lot of times many children die because they know that they don't have equipment here, but they but the family knows they can't go that far, so they'll just stay at home. They won't even bring their child here because it's like, what good is that going to do? So if they had a device that they could use here, more babies would be saved. Would they, so if they sent the files and the cardiologist at the Roosevelt Hospital did diagnose them and wanted them to come in because they thought they needed surgery, mm -hmm. um, would they be able to go? 
Some people that live five or six hours away that no car even gets to their village and they have to come by foot or by horse and so they just think it's futile if their baby has a problem that they just let it die because they can't even get here let alone you know do anything else but she feels that if they were able to get here and diagnose a heart problem and they knew there was something that could be done about it that it could be diagnosed to, that there could be an answer for what's wrong with their baby, then they would come and then they would go to Roosevelt Hospital if they, if they knew that the baby had a heart problem that was treatable. One of the great things is these doctors really caught on very quickly, like, oh, this is like cardiologist on call for me. You know, I can send them information, get a second opinion, get an expert opinion. So really latched on to the idea of this remote telecardiology option because there's a lot of mistrust. So even when they refer these people to the larger cities to go to a hospital, see a cardiologist, they probably won't go even if it's paid for. So we really kind of jump over that gap. Uh, it's day four, we're in Shela, Guatemala, also known as Quetzaltenango, staying in a hostel. We've been enjoying our trip so far, enjoying the food, but we're losing soldiers rapidly. Three of us have come down with some kind of sickness. Um, we're not exactly sure what it is, but we're making the best out of the situation and we'll have to continue on with a smaller contingency out of our group. <laughs> By the end of the day, most of the students were suffering from food poisoning, and so the drive on the curved, pothole-ridden, and steep roads in central Guatemala was a challenge. The mood brightened when the students saw their first glimpse of Lake Atitlan, the deepest lake in Central America and what many consider the most beautiful place in Guatemala. <laughs> The last stretch of the trip led the students into a small boat and into a village accessible only by water. Okay. You should take us a little bit longer route, but it should be a little less choppy. So after week in Guatemala, I think it's safe to say we're all a little bit tired. It's been physically exhausting and demanding to be traveling across the entire country, several hours in a van every day, hiking up and down to different clinics and back and forth. But it's also been mentally challenging when you go to these clinics and you hear the stories of just the the, the great needs they have, running out of supplies, the challenge of having to hike great. in the middle of the night to go help a, a, a woman deliver a baby, take, having to take a, a hike to a bus, to a boat, to another bus to get to the hospital. We're taking a truck up to uh, the village to see a health clinic. Our last oh. clinic visit. So yep, last take care of business. business. Yeah. This, this clinic is in a, a government facility that also houses a private medical clinic, but we'll be visiting the government facility today. It told, we're told it's a very busy facility, and so we're going to have a limited time to talk with a doctor and a nurse, hopefully. The manager of the facility will not be able to talk to us, but we're hoping to get information from the people that will be there today. Looking forward to a great time, like always. <laughs> Signing off, Jeremy. <laughs> Presento al grupo de estudiantes de los Estados Unidos de, de la Universidad de Michigan. Okay, so this is like the chart for family planning, so that every woman that comes... Um, so one thing I found surprising and interesting and also kind of in inspiring was that many of the women, or many times in these villages, the women are very much involved in the healthcare system and there is a lot of empowerment of women going on in the country, which I thought was really cool. So there were several things that we learned that were specific design requirements that we didn't necessarily think about before. One of which is these clinics operate in a relatively noisy environment. There's patients waiting, there's exams being conducted, there's children running around. The entire environment is really a relatively noisy place. Our device is going to have to be able to operate with some kind of noise cancellation to allow a high fidelity, clear recording to be performed in relatively any environment. Second, they have pediatric stethoscopes that are different than the normal stethoscopes that adults, they use on adults that are, that are larger. And that's going to be a requirement that we're going to have to satisfy. A lot of the doctors specifically asked us if we we're planning on using an, a, an infant stethoscope. And that's something that we're going to have to explore and implement in our next prototype. The last thing is sound quality has to be, has to be really high. The doctors in Guatemala City are listening for very, very faint changes, faint things that are different than they normally would be. And if our device is not able to capture those small differences in a, in a clear way, this device is not going to be successful in, in its final implementation. Wow.
was really, really eye-opening. Some of these places we went have very basic needs in terms of nutrition, in terms of just basic trust in the healthcare system, in terms of supplies of very basic medicines. And it really puts it in perspective that, that our device can help at a certain level, but if some very basic needs are not yet met in the healthcare system, then really this, this won't help. So I think it helps to understand where our device fits in the whole um, healthcare ecosystem here in Guatemala. When we came in, we had some preconceived notions about how useful this would be or how eager they would be to use this. And for a certain tier of clinic that we went to, it was exactly what they needed. But for others, the needs were even more basic. So that was pretty eye-opening and uh, important lesson on the trip. Throughout this, the theme has been that, that we're here just learning. At this point, we really haven't given anything back. You know, we really owe it to these folks that have helped us learn at this point to come back with something that can actually improve healthcare here and um, give back to them in the way that they've given to us. Can listen to... <laughs> 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 uh, because we've been presented with a problem. 15... <laughs> And we want <laughs> Martian. <laughs> Come on. Wake up early, shining shoes. Afternoon, I sell cashews all day long. In the park, I work my ass off. Dawn to dark, time to go home. I don't make no fuss. I make that chicken buzz. Yes, yes, up top. Boom. Oh, what did you do? Oh. It's not actually oh. that hard. No, well, you're going on the straight, it's not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Baby screaming at the gringo, throw your trash right out the window. Pay the man 20 Q. All and the each other. Too. You got ripped off, I guess you must be on that. Chicken buzz. One piece of advice is when you're sharing a room with 12 omnipotent students. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> uh oh, next one's gonna be good. <laughs> this read, it, read it, read it, read <laughs> it. Marching, marching, marching. <laughs> 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 <laughs>